Hey everyone, Gerald here again from the studio. And I have a new tutorial to share with you today. This is actually a sped up recording of one of my character demos in my concept art class. And the topic that I decided to work with was a steam night. And here I am just writing down my notes, gothic armor, jousting uh, equipment and whatnot. And the, re the recording is actually done in one of my classrooms here in Malaysia and I tend to like to do a lot of live tutorials. And this sped up section will be narrated, but I'm going to include a hour long version of this as well with just background music so you can definitely check it out. But I figured 30 minutes might be good length for me to really walk through my thought process when it comes to designing a character like this. So before I even start on a design, I do like to have some kind of grounded reality, especially for something like this where it is a knight's armor. So there's a lot of construction and engineering that is already done and it would be wiser for me to just stick to whatever works and not try to reinvent the wheel with respect to the armor. The other thing as well is, since it's a female character, I also like to just, for the same reason, load some good anatomical references on the side to make sure I always have some solid foundation before I begin. So now that I have my keywords and my references, I'm going to start sketching out the design. And I didn't really plan this artwork, so I'm just going freehand at the moment. But I always start with a nice vertical line, a ground line, and use very loose lines to block out the general form and stance of the design. I definitely have an idea of her holding some kind of jousting weapon that's attached to a steam-powered backpack, and she would be wearing gothic armor. But aside from that, I'm just kind of letting the design flow. I am thinking about good gesture and maybe a powerful posture for the character. This would be a really proud character, so I do want her to stand in a nice solid manner. And now that I have the what I call rough sketch blocked out, I'm going to bring in some references on the side and start to really draw more accurate version of the design by using those references on the side as a guide on how the construction of the armor is supposed to be and how the fitting of a actual gothic knight armor is supposed to be. And I like to use 3D renders for this. Uh, if you Google up like assets that the 3D modelers sell, they usually tend to be accompanied by really good, high quality renders and they're usually very accurate. Most importantly, the lighting is very consistent, which makes it a very nice texture to use. So I'm just sketching away at the moment. Um, I like to bounce around my design, block out pieces of the armor part by part just so that I don't get too caught up with details at the moment because the, the final outcome is a photo bash colored sketch. So for me, what's crucial in the line sketch part is just trying to figure out a correct form factor. Uh, and that's where the references really come in handy. So here I am just talking a little bit about the idea of how our memory works because we might have an idea what the night looks like in our brains or in our recollection but we actually really don't know about the secondary and micro details that go into a full costume like a night armor. So even though you're very familiar with something, it's always a good idea to have a real world reference by your side. This way, every line that you put on paper is justified based on the reference. And you can basically always be sure that whatever you're putting in is accurate. 
So although this character is a, obviously an imagined fantasy design, I still want to make sure that all of the clothing elements sit properly. So I'm reaching the end of the line sketch. Uh, I normally don't take my line sketches too far. This is probably about as far as I'll take it. Um, purely because I, I do like to solve all the details in the photo bashing and painting process. So you can see rough composition slash gesture on the left and now I'm just cleaning up the line sketch with liquify, making sure all the silhouettes nice and pointy. And we're gonna start moving on to the larger section is actually the photo bashing section of this. So for me, photo bashing textures are actually very different from design references. Um, sometimes I might not even use the exact topic. Uh, in this case, although the armor is specifically designed based on the gothic armor, I may or may not need to use exactly a gothic armor set to get the textures, right? Because what I want is just the material properties of said armor. So obviously if you can find the exact one, it's gonna make your life much easier. And for me, what's important when it comes to photo bashing is just making sure that the middle line or the form lines actually match your drawing. And this is where the warp transform tool really help out because it allows me to distort the textures to, so that it really aligns with the contours and forms of my sketch. I like to start with larger chunks of the design. So I'm working on the entire torso first before moving to the shoulders. Generally, I like to start in the middle of the design. So torso being the middle, the largest armor section of the design. It's a good place for me to begin because if I don't get that part right, uh, all the other sections will probably struggle in terms of placement and materials. Because my workflow actually, I do like to, at least to some degree, consider lighting and material consistency, even in the early stages of photo bashing. So I will use um, color adjustment tools. Uh, I would use removing shadow and highlights that's under image adjustments, remove shadow and highlights to also flatten the lighting of these textures. And I'll use some um, hue and saturation color balance to readjust the chroma, the saturation of the set textures. You can of course set a action or save an action if you're using a texture repeatedly and you want to apply the same level or layer adjustments to it. I also would clean my textures using the content aware fill, which is Shift F5 to fill with content aware. That's a great way to clean up your source texture or you know flatten or smooth out the section of your source texture. So I'm not using many textures for this photo bash. You know, uh, I do have a lot of pictures open, but I think I was basically cutting and pasting from two and three images tops, at least with respect to the armor. This is good for several reasons. One is that the lighting will be more consistent as well as the materials. Uh, so you don't have to do so much to match the fidelity, resolution, material, properties, etc. Um, second is as well, it, it forces me to make the most out of something, right? Because I don't want to be cycling through half a dozen pictures or more each time whenever I'm doing this, because the goal is to be fast. The goal of photo bashing is to alleviate the timing issues or the, the cost of painting everything from scratch, 
right? So if you're spending more time photo bashing uh, and you're not really creating an artwork, then it kind of creates its own problem. So definitely stick to less pictures. If the photos don't turn out the way you want to, you can always paint over it. And it's definitely a, a process that you have to get a customized, a custom with. And so here I'm beginning to block out the loin cloth and I have a library of um, cloth capes that I like to use. I believe I've used this texture for many, many artworks, many projects. And it's a simple flat texture that I can distort and modify so that it fits the angle. Um, and once again, I, I like to just plop that cloth in and then now I'm actually adjusting the rest of the character. For me, seeing how all the textures work together as a whole is important. So definitely be cautious of getting too tunnel vision with your work. Um, so always bounce around the different stages of your artwork. Um, and you want to make sure that you're doing this so that all of your creative decisions are based off the whole the design as a whole so you don't get lost or caught up with an area and then realize that it's all the decisions or effort that you put in is actually not necessary because it's not it's not working in the context of the entire concept so that's really the reason why i like to kind of bounce around go rough and give myself a chance to see a low resolution version of the entire concept before doubling down on adding details and fidelity and finishing work. So now that all of the silver armor is complete, I'm using this nice little strap here from this 3D model asset to quickly block out some backpack straps. I'm also using this texture to add a belt. And again, extensively using the warp tool to quickly reshape the texture so that it fits my design. So this video was sped up four times, 400%. So originally it took two hours, um, but I was talking to my students. So I think it was about hour and a half of, of solid work per se. Um, so I think a good majority of the artwork is already established within this point. I would say this is about an hour in. So we, we spent easily at least 30 minutes real time, 20 30 minutes real time to sketch, which I think is important because that's actually the one of the core design phases. And we spent so far another 30 minutes at this point to get the concept to a point where it's presentable, I would say, right? Because it has some materials, it has volume and, and, and color blocked in. Um, but that's why I like this workflow. That's why I love photo bashing because I can fully express myself in a way that's quick and efficient and and I know there's a lot of concern about using pictures. Um, obviously, if it's obviously if, if it's affecting your design thoughts, I, I guess it's inevitable for it to affect your designs. But I still kind of go back to that mantra of mine, where as long as the design is still truly yours, that everything that you're putting on this concept it's coming from you so if it's all coming from you then no matter what methods you use be it photo bashing 3d assets bashing photographing your own pictures or whatnot it's, it's still your design and i think that's the most important thing that you need to remember whenever you're doing any design actually because even if you're using paper or pen you you could still be influenced by something else and to that degree 
that's also have its own problem because you're not exactly true to what you're trying to create here. So for me, um, I love using pictures just because it, it allows me to focus more on the design and storytelling and less on the how to paint and how to achieve metal. Um, I know I wanted it to look like a gothic knight, so using a gothic knight as a base made a lot of sense to me. So now that I have all of the textures in place, I've actually merged everything because I like to work simple and clean for a rough design like this. And I've also hid the line sketch and I'm actually going over the entire piece now and just giving it a little bit of ambient shadows. So this is uh, what I call ambient occlusion shadows or occluding shadows. And also just kicking in some of the highlights, adding some rim lights. So I'm essentially painting or tying all of the textures and forms together so that they start to react more as a complete uh, surface. I would say this part is where if you're not, if you don't understand lighting, you might have a lot of trouble here. And that's normally where I see my students struggle or where I think they start to notice like the photo bashing outcome isn't as good as they thought it would be. Um, mainly because they don't know how to tie the lighting together and tie the materials together. So the photos can only take you so far because this is not a matte painting, it's not a montage task. It's, you're, you're still painting and concepting. Understanding how light works is really important. In my class, uh, I tend to focus a lot on fundamentals. So if you look at a lot of my artworks, especially my demos, I tend to use very, very simple lighting. Uh, top down, soft light. The reason for that is because you want to get really comfortable with one light source first before attempting to play around with several light sources. Um, get really good and really comfortable with one light source. Um, do the whole classic assignment of painting a sphere with different materials. Try a silver metal sphere, a skin sphere, and a very simple single light source. Once you do that, and once you get good at that, that's, that's when you can start to maybe make your lighting more complex. But for the most part, I, I notice uh, people tend to struggle with making their artworks look realistic. It usually tends to be a, light, a lighting issue. That's also where I notice photo bashing artworks tend to show signs of problem or distress when the lighting isn't consistent across the board. So here I am just explaining the concept of lighting. So I tend to do this practices quite a lot. This is just a simple material sphere. So this is a matte surface with no specularity. And basically that's trying to explain the difference between the two kinds of shadows, cast shadow and occluding shadows. So at this point, I'm just adding a bit more cast shadow in between the character. And because the lighting is really soft, um, I don't have to be too precise. I can kind of just wiggle my way around it to get something that looks partially convincing. But I'm just, again, using the lasso to select all the areas that I think would have shadow. Applying a black material, so this is pure black, right? And this, I kept it pure black because it's easy for me to see where the shadow was. And what we'll do is we'll set it to multiply and then we'll just lighten it accordingly so that it, you know, it looks more realistic. I'm also going to start establishing some light in my environment and this is really important because you can't really understand lighting unless you light your environment in the first place. Um, this is a common trap as well I notice with students because they tend to paint everything in the grey background or black background and 
because of that, a lot of their contrast measurements tend to go haywire. So real quickly, what I'm showing here is actually how I do a cast shadow on the character, especially for a top-down character. So I'm just literally tracing a rough outline of the top view, filling it with black, and then using the transform tool to position the shadow underneath the character. Works really well for top-down lighting, and I think it looks better. It makes the design look really presentable. I learned this trick from Aaron Beck's tutorial. He did a lovely masterclass on ArtStation a couple years back, and I've been using this method to create top-down shadows ever since. Works especially well for mechanical design as well. But back to the environment, just establishing a very simple bounce light, uh, cast shadow, and understanding the basic concepts of reflectivity and how materials react because of the environment is kind of like one of the core fundamentals you want to get not just familiar with, but really comfortable with before you even start tackling something like this. So now I'm going to move on to the final stages, which is adding some decals and patterns on the design. So I'll just grab this generic medieval lion, lion pattern, and I'm just adjusting its shape so that I get something a little bit more different. Once again, because I'm using pictures from the internet, I do want to make sure that I manipulate them to a degree that they become something else altogether and the more you manipulate them that's the well, the more legally protected you are especially if you're using a graphic like this so if this was a paid job and not a public demo that I'm giving in school um, I would definitely alter this way further to just make sure that you know my client and myself don't get into any copyright issues with patterns like this so now that it's fitted into place, I'm using Liquify to make sure that the bends and folds of the cloth is reflected onto the pattern. The pattern is also actually done as a smart object um, so that if I save the smart object, which is this flat texture here, it actually gets reflected. All the changes get updated onto the surface of the concept really useful um, to play around with smart objects especially if you have a lot of patterns and whatnot and you want to preserve the editing details or editing capabilities keeping them as smart objects is a nice way of uh, preserving it so this means that every time i make an adjustment to the pattern i don't have to redo that effect on the cloth it gets updated automatically So we're basically reaching the late part of the concept. You know, at this point, I think the entire costume is about done. Uh, and I'm going to move on to doing the head. So if you recall, uh, if you haven't seen it, I do have a much more in-depth video of how I do my little portrait hack. Um, I'll pop the link in below as well if you want to check it out. But basically, it's a nice way to paint heads if you're a little bit unsure or you still find it difficult challenging but essentially what i'll do is i'll actually use sketchfab um, to find a nice default head to get lighting information i would always draw the head myself first because it's i still want to make sure i have a design that i'm working with and this Sketchfab screenshot is really just for lighting information. So a model like this is really good because I can control the shadows. And so what I'm doing now is just making sure the 3D screenshot lines up with my drawing. And I also have a nice 3D model here of a girl's head, roughly the same angle. Uh, and I'm gonna just use that for texture properties. So I'm liquefying the Sketchfab screenshot so that it aligns with my drawing, which is really important. 
this is to make sure that this is still following my design and I'm not being uh, overly affected by the screenshot. I don't want to anyway. And I'm going to do the same thing with the textured version, which I really like because the lighting is really flat. So it just gives me a lot of good micro details and color information. So just using the liquify tool, nudging the texture around. Uh, this is obviously much easier when your texture or your photograph is somewhat similar angle. And I'm going to go in and start to paint in the missing things. Obviously the eye angle is different and I wanted the mouth to be closed so I need to make sure I paint that in. And once again just adjusting the proportions. I tend to do this a few times until I get it right. I don't normally get it right the first time to be honest. It tends to take a few tries uh, before everything starts to line up. So don't be too worried if you can't get it working right the first time. It does take a little bit of finessing. So now that I have the 3D screenshot aligned with my sketch, I'm just uh, adjusting it, hue and saturation levels to just make sure that the I, what I really wanted was just that nice shadow. I, in fact, I'm even adding additional shadows on my own. But essentially, that's all I want from that 3D screenshot. It's just that additional volume information that a 3D model can just give me. All right, the car shadow from the helmet is something that I have to add in because obviously the under version didn't have it. And I'm gonna paint in the eyes now just to finish up the portrait. So I like to start with the pupils to give me the direction of the eyes and then I'll gradually paint in the iris. I'm also going to use the same 3D screenshot to add a little bit of specularity. Specularity again is the little highlights on the skin on a shiny surface so I would crank that up just to make it look like she's a little bit sweaty, nicely moisturized underneath all of that armor. And finally just going through the whole thing again just making sure that the texture is nicely embedded and adding any sort of remaining shadows, line details and whatnot. I'm also making sure my texture is nice and clean and that everything is organized. So I just want to add a little bit of extra kibble or mechanical detail in the background. So I'm just using this little steam engine as a quick way to block out. I know I wanted a cylindrical backpack, like a little cylindrical steam canister. So for me, an object like this is generic enough that I don't feel it would be a concern legally, I would say, uh, because it is a metal cylinder with two attachments on the side. I, I don't think it's a very unique thing. So for me, grabbing that from Sketchpad is not just a big, not such a big deal. And I have adjusted the forms enough to make it mine. So I've just positioned it there, um, adding some more details that were missing on the helmet. Uh, you can see me now zooming back and forth, back and forth, because I'm adding something in and then zooming out just to evaluate the design and making sure everything is in place correctly. Adding a little bit of steam now to kind of give this design a bit more atmosphere and movement because it is rather static of design. So steam, smoke, fire, dust, all nice things to add to give your design some sense of life. So final passes, going through the whole artwork with the dodge tool, just kind of bring up some of the highlights going with a fine brush and adding some small panel lines and also using adjustment layers to just make sure that the values are all properly balanced out. And that's really a matter of taste. So for me, um, I hope that you found this tutorial useful once again, you know, um, let me know what you think in the comment section, whether you prefer the sped up versions of this or you prefer like a full unedited live version. Um, 
I personally enjoy short tutorials, so I'm not sure about you guys, but currently I'm trying to find a good middle ground for sped up versions versus a too long version because I do notice my students dozing off if I paint for two hours straight. So I'm trying to find a nice format of these tutorials. Uh, but that's my character demo for the Steam Night. Thank you again for tuning in. Please like and subscribe if you think this video is useful. And happy creating. Have a good day.